We know that uh, autophagy is one of the biggest reasons why people like to do intermittent fasting and it's one of the also main benefits that you get from that. But what is the best intermittent fasting window for autophagy? Hey, my name is Steve Lund and in this video I'm going to tell you exactly that. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it. Probably one of the biggest misconceptions about autophagy is that you need to fast for like, you know, three to five days in order to activate some autophagy in the first place. There is truth to that, that the longer you do fast, then you do see an increase in autophagy in across different species in humans as well. But there, you don't necessarily have to fast for like, you know, this extended period of time to even ha activate it in the first place. It's not this on and off switch that, you know, just turns on at hour 72 or something like that. Autophagy happens to a certain degree all the time. And we also have studies, human studies, that show that even as fast as 16 hours of fasting is enough to increase the levels of basal autophagy. It's a trap! And the biggest thing that determines whether or not you see an increase in autophagy or a decrease in it is your liver glycogen status, essentially. So the liver glycogen regulates all these different pathways that also regulate autophagy, such as AMPK. If you fast around 12 hours or so, then your liver glycogen stores begin to deplete. And that already is uh, good enough to start to see a rise in ketones and uh, autophagy related genes as well in a dose specific manner. But we also have to look at it from the aspect of circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are your body's diurnal rhythms linked to the day and night cycles of the environment and they control virtually all processes inside the body starting with the metabolism, cognition and ending with autophagy as well. We also know that autophagy has a strong diurnal rhythm and uh, it uh, functions or fluctuates with a circadian rhythm. Melatonin, the sleep hormone, is a strong regulator of autology and in order to have higher levels of autology then you need melatonin to do its work in sleep specifically natural melatonin levels start to rise in the evening around 9 p.m or so they peak maybe 11 p.m and uh, start to decline after 2 a.m in the morning that is where many other beneficial processes for anti-aging also occur, such as the rise in growth hormone around 11 p.m. as well as autophagy around 11 p.m. So what this means is that if you want to maximize the benefits of intermittent fasting and time free eating for autophagy and let's say longevity, then uh, you also want to coordinate, do or conduct these processes together when it's the most optimal time to do so. And that for humans apparently is around, you know, earlier, the first part, first half of the night where you have increased in melatonin, increased growth hormone and increased autophagy. In practice, what this means is that early time restricted eating, where you eat breakfast, lunch, maybe like a lighter dinner or an early dinner, that, you know, in theory is probably better for getting the benefits of autophagy because you're going into a semi fasted state already once you go to bed and you don't have this higher amount of liver glycogen to buffer the process of going into autophagy and uh, high amounts of uh, insulin and high blood sugar levels can also disrupt your sleep. So it all makes sense that, you know, you shouldn't eat immediately before bed and you would want to have like at least a few hours before bed where you're not eating stop it the 2019 study that i referred to earlier did also that they had the people eating earlier in the day and they saw improvements in these autophagy genes and so two in one and etc so if i were to say which fasting window is the best for getting the benefits of autophagy then i would say an eating window of early time restricted eating that means that you know you eat earlier in the day or at least it does mean that you shouldn't eat like a very late dinner like you want to have at least a few hours before bed where you're stopped eating and uh, i mean you don't even have to eat breakfast there's like i don't think that it's very magical to eat the breakfast i think the most of the magic comes from you stop eating earlier in the evening so that you maybe like a very early dinner around maybe 5 p.m at, at the latest and optimally i would say that if you want to fully maximize the benefits of autology and uh, melatonin and uh, growth hormone then uh, maybe like even like a 3 p.m uh, dinner disappointed Obviously, that's not, you know, very practical for a lot of people. People like to eat dinner. Dinner is the most sociable event of the day. And I would say that you can still gain a lot of the benefits of autophagy and uh, these other processes if you have, like, the somewhat of a later time of eating uh, window where you skip uh, breakfast, you eat lunch and dinner. But still, like, I wouldn't say that, like, a 10 p.m. dinner is any good. Like, you definitely want to have the latest meal at least like 7 p.m. or something around there and wait around three four maybe at max like five hours before bed when you stop eating and that that is what you um, you know, want to have 
uh, from the circadian rhythm biology side and uh, as well as the uh, melatonin and autophagy production side. If you want to know what's the best way to do interval fasting and how to optimize it, then check out my 4K HD quality video course about it that has over five hours of content. But on that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.